Hello YouTube and welcome to Gromforks. In this episode of Kerbal Engineering, I will be teaching you how to build an SSDI. For those of you that might be wondering what SSDI is, it's a single stage to interplanetary. So um, I was originally thinking it was going to be SSDA, like single stage to anywhere, but then again it lacks some features to be able to, you know, take off of EVE and a little bit of um, maybe lathe, I'm not sure if, if it would be capable of doing that. So it is inter interplanetary and we will be using it to go to, I believe, Duna or somewhere else, depending. However, uh, this uh, craft is designed to be unlike my shuttles, the Discovery and Voyager that I'm using in the uh, in the save for my interplanetary voyage. Uh, this one is also designed to be able to travel travel inter interplanetary, but also take off and land on planets because I needed two shuttles in my save, one to actually travel between the planets and another one to land on the planets. This one I'm hoping it will be able to achieve both. And I am using, well, lots of mods, but the idea is that I want to use Vasmir thrusters uh, for the interplanetary propulsion using xenon gas. Uh, while for the main engine, I will be using the engine that I have gotten with, I believe it was OPT, Orbital Portal Technology Spaceplane Parts. At least I think it's it came with them, I'm not sure. Um, okay, so, uh, dual xenon tanks, and one, we want to be putting Vasmir engines at the back, or Vasimir. I'm not sure how to actually pronounce that one, but... Then I want two fission reactors in the front. And let's just fix the staging a little bit, because I want the Vasimir engines to light second, not the first. Then I'm looking for an alternative to the fission reactors. And uh, by the way, guys, uh, this will be a little bit longer episode, roughly 40-ish minutes. And the design will take some good first portion of it. But uh, I will sh be showing also some of the failures that I've encountered because designing this craft isn't at all easy. And I'm thinking that by showing you also some of the failures that I have encountered will hopefully show you how do I approach design things. Because the purpose of the series is not only to tell you, okay, well, do this and you will have an SSTA, but also to a little bit teach on what is my reasoning when designing such a craft. So... Obviously, xenon tanks, we said Vasimir engines, and I want to be putting some radiators which will be attached directly to the um, directly to the um, fission reactors. And I'm using, as you can see, dual type. W one is the active radiators that will be consuming some amount of electric charge while um, the fission reactor is on. And obviously when it's not, but as long as they are being activated and the other ones are deployable ones that would be basically consuming um, ta taking off heat when they are deployed only so I am looking for the uh, experimenting with different you know designs and I was thinking first removing the monoprop but once I get a look at it it looks actually kind of good and having some monoprop in the front would help keep my center of mass forward which is the basic principle i use at the planes space planes and everything have your center of mass in front of your center of lift because that provides aerodynamic stability on flight and also on re-entry which is even more important so as you can see i'm having a lot of um, i can put to manual switching and I want to be using xenon gas, and you can see we have 20,000 delta V. 
However, our thrust to weight is uh, almost negligible, so I didn't like that, and I still have to add the wings and all that jazz. So I don't want my um, engines to be really that bad when it comes to power. So I'm thinking almost I would prefer to have a single xenon tank per side, connect this, and in that case I can put them way back. And despite the fact that I will have much less delta V, I will have a very, well, at least a little bit better thrust to weight. And that's what I'm hoping to achieve anyway. Then we want to be placing the wings and I want to be using the space plane uh, wings from the procedural dynamics procedural wing design. So to have this sort of space plane-ish look and feel. And I'm just now modeling it, seeing how it will look like. I want it to be a little bit, you know, advanced design because I really want my uh, craft to be aesthetically pleasing. So, yes. And I'm almost thinking like to put them also swept back like dart rather than just regular delta because my typical go-to design is delta. Of course, I will have winglets in front. So far, everything seems pretty good. Okay, then we want to be putting tails and we need to be putting some intakes as well. So, first things first, let's take a look at the tail. Well, this huge tail won't cut it because um, otherwise it might get stuck to the station when I dock because I have a docking port just behind the uh, monoprop fuel tank. Okay, let's see where we can put them. Somewhere along these lines. And I want to be them only responsible for controlling the yaw. And these guys should be front ailerons or winglets should be only controlling the pitch and roll. Okay. So let's check the intakes and I'm using the B9 divertless supersonic intake. I need a lot of intakes because when you know when you're doing an SSTO you really want to have as many intakes as possible because the more air you intake uh, the higher you can have your cruising altitude basically the more airflow gets fed into your engine and despite the fact the atmosphere is thinner you will still have a better control. Okay, something along those lines. A lot of air brakes because when I do need to air brake I want to do it quickly and efficiently. And typically I prefer to have smaller air brakes for you know like just keeping the stability and uh, bigger air brakes just to make sure that I can really stop as fast as possible. So that's kind of my reasoning anyway. Okay, so when it comes to strutting this, I'm using the invisible struts just to make this design a little bit more sturdy. Okay, come on, attach, will you? Okay, great. So, and I'm deliberately using the new type of cockpit just to keep it fresh. Okay, time to take a look at the landing gear. And I'm sort of inclined to take the medium landing gear. I hope it won't come back to bite me in the ass. And even the smaller one at the behind. Uh, they have to be slightly behind the center of mass so that we can pivot around them. And okay, let's set up the action groups. We want to be having clamp patron on the docking port and I will document all of these things later. But then let's check our plasma thrusters. I'm trying to figure out, I know that they have like a big trade-off in terms of thrust power versus the fuel economy. 
So you can use them both ways. If you need a little more thrust, then you increase uh, the throttle, and basically that means that you will get a lot more thrust, but the expense of your fuel economy. But let's try this with the main engine. And the main engine is really, really powerful. I mean, I'm almost crossing the Mach 1 threshold and I have barely left the runway. So the engine clearly has a lot going for it. By the way, test is being performed by Valentina, Bill and Edlu. For those of you more keen-eyed, I am sorry, Adlu has actually died in my Series 1, but I guess one of the transfers, when I have tr was transferring it, I didn't pay very much attention. So, Adlu will actually be here and flying it to the space station, but after that I will make sure that uh, Adlu is, remains dead and buried. So this is, think of it as Ghost of Adlu. Yeah or just a lame excuse for my sloppiness. Sorry, guys. Okay, uh, apoapsis height 60, and I want to turn off the Vasimir engines. So, just enabling everything, and great. And my nuclear reactor is powered. So I'm just now trying to regulate the throttle because, well, I mean, thrust l limiter to 100, switching to xenon gas, and oop, I ran out of electric charge. Crap. And that's uh, because my reactors haven't been spooled up yet properly, so I'm trying to increase the temperature and see if I can... Yeah core overheating and then again it's shutting down and guys this is uh, simply due to the reason because I forgot to activate the active cooling radiators and um, yeah so this is simply the case and uh, since I have forgotten that or basically I didn't know I needed to activate the uh, active radiators and that they would be taking electric charge I have deployed the extending radiators which basically made my core to overheat and then just my aircraft lost stability because one of the engines died, it was electric charge deprived and basically that means that <laughs> I had to then fight again to regain stability. So the first test launch was pretty decent for the uh, main engine which I believe is actually a ramjet so basically the higher and faster it goes the more efficient it gets but I mean it's not really sipping fuel it's more like gas guzzler it when you get to this really incredible acceleration then it starts chugging on fuel like crazy however I mean the trade-off which it gives is well worth it as you can see I'm accelerating to a ludicrous speed, which resulted in both of my nuclear fission generators just going bust. So, I figured it would be smart that I just restart the simulation. Okay, and actually I thought even it might be more prudent to revert to editor because I want to be setting up action groups because flying this SSTI will be a little bit of a challenge. So, first of all, first is toggle the main engine, then is toggle the intakes, then the third would be toggle the radiators and then the fission reactors and then we want to be putting the clampotron and uh, the docking bay or cargo bay and then we have what else do we have we have the reactors hold on that will be mapping to the four five we will be putting to yeah the plasma engines Six, we will be putting to change the mode, I guess. Maybe, maybe not. 
or we could be putting clan patron and uh, then we want to be putting I want to also to put the info drive because uh, there is no way in hell that I would remember all of these mappings so I think it would be convenient toggle jet engine toggle intakes toggle radiators start the reactors toggle xenon engines then what do we have on action 6 xenon switch mode 7 cargo bay 8 docking port 9 air brakes heavy and 0 air brakes light and I think that's good enough close it and let's give it another simulation run I mean for those of you that want to see only the launch final launch I would recommend that you skip towards the end of the video uh, however uh, this is more to show design and failures that I'm doing because yeah well this is how I roll okay this time I decided to wait for dawn because it's much more beautiful and we have Valentina Bill and the ghost of Idlu going so this time I'm going with a slightly slightly lower speed at takeoff however still going very very fast because this engine is it's not OP only because it drinks liquid fuel like there is no manana so yeah I have assumed the 30 percent pitch up and then kick the gas to a half which basically gives us a surface speed of one Mach and then I figured I would raise my nose to the 50 degrees to get as high as possible as quickly as possible and then I will be leveling off around 15,000 and I'm trying to now find the optimal angle at which to shoot out by the way guys the reasoning behind this uh, craft why I don't have a dual mode engines on the main like rapiers or sabers or anything like that is oh and I have instability for some reason wow and I believe that this is due to the fact that I have no SAS authority not much at least and that my center of mass and center of thrust are not in line 100% so that's also something to consider oh and my tail planes are just going willy-nilly so I do lose a little bit stability okay never mind we have regained control yes so where was I oh yes when it comes to the main engine the whole idea with this craft was to have a powerful engine that will just shoot us out towards the into space hopefully and then the ta remaining circularization could be achieved using the plasma engines alone so that's kind of uh, the idea so we're not taking the regular SSTO profile where we're trying to accelerate as much as possible at let's say 10 between 10 and 20 but we are just shooting up at some 30 degree angle and once hoping to achieve around 65 70 ish peri uh, apoapsis and the moment we achieve that then is as soon as we get high enough high enough I'm turning on the plasma engines and then hopefully pushing us out of the atmosphere so still a little bit more trying kicking the gas as much as possible but I'm already too high and my speed is a bit too low ish I'm trying to get as far as surface speed of 1600 at the moment when we shoot out okay well we have shot up nicely 66 um, degrees 66 um, kilometers periapsis sorry apoapsis and uh, right now I am just turning on the plasma engines then the radiators the problem is that I have 
done another mistake because I've put auto shutdown temperature uh, to 2000 degrees. And that's something that I have not realized. And what happened is that my core melted. Simply put. And then I realized that the critical temperature is actually a little bit lower. So, yeah. Critical temperature is 1300 Kelvin and I had the shutdown temperature at 2000 Kelvin. So I have decided to reduce the auto shutdown temperature to 1200 roughly. And then also to make sure that I start the radiators at the moment when I start the reactor. Because I wasn't clearly, I clearly wasn't doing that. Okay, just making sure that I have a line center of mass and center of thrust. I mean, it does tend to veer off for some reason. I don't know exactly why. However, I think also that we could benefit from a single additional intake somewhere along these lines because I feel uh, this intake will help us grab a little bit more intake air and hopefully give us a little bit more kick in terms of shooting out of the atmosphere at ludicrous speed. Okay. So far I like the design. Let's kick it another simulation, shall we? As you can see in this design process I'm doing a lots of simulation and I'm trying to also comment what then am I doing wrong in each of them. So in previous my core melted so clearly my radiator wasn't working any longer. Once again waiting for the dawn. Kick in the engine. Let's see if we do better this time. Beautiful sunrise. Okay, already crossing the Mach 1 threshold. Beautiful. And I'm already starting up the radiators first and then starting the reactors because I don't want to waste time starting up my reactors when I'm already should be thrusting with my plasma engines. I want my radiators already to be warm, um, started up and properly cooled by the actual radi radiators. So, yeah. And now we are going 1100 and I am slightly worried about my reactors. Then I decided to kill my engines just briefly. We have an apoapsis of 62 and I'm enabling my plasma engines. However, at this stage I believe I have made a critical error when I didn't understand the power level of the of the engine which is basically its core feature and I didn't use the trade-off of uh, higher thrust to achieve orbit so I was actually thrusting as much as I could with the minimum power that these engines were possible to you know provide and then my core overheated and I have consumed all of the electric charge so yeah once again restarted the restarted the, re the fission reactors and now I have figured out how to increase but then I'm already you know on the way down so I have passed my apoapsis and well I will be once again going through the rigors of the re-entry if I had started, you know, and used the thrusters at the right time, I probably would have a chance to go to space, but not this time. 
Okay, one more try. Like I said, designing such a plane isn't easy and that's why I really wanted to show you this many failures, tries, attempts until I actually got the design right. Okay, taking off. Pitching up, I mean that part is pretty much nailed. Beautiful sunrise. And this time I'm shooting for 40 degrees angle and I'm thinking that I will be trying to get as quickly as I can, as high as I can. Leveling off or pitching my nose only slightly down to 30. And now kicking everything to the max. But then again, my engines quickly start to overheat and I become a little bit worried. 1200, I think it's too little. I've disabled my jet engine and I want to be activating my plasma engines and then electric charge is running out. I have deployed also the radiators. And I have put power setting to 100, hoping to see if I will be able to actually push this guy into space. And as you can see, my apoapsis is already 67, so I am actually throttling towards it, but we'll see how it goes. Seventy. So our apoapsis is actually above the carbon surface. Now the question if we will be able to accelerate fast enough to be able to circularize is a different matter. So we have clearly overcome getting into the space and out of the atmosphere. Now we have to figure out staying there. So 1500 and I'm already past the apoapsis and I'm on my way down. Meaning these engines alone won't give me enough kick to get enough speed to be able to stay orbital. But I think it they are coming pretty close when it comes to it. So although I'm on a descent path I am accelerating to the, let's say, 1,800, which, and 2,200 is, be, I believe, roughly the orbital speed of Kerbin. So that's definitely something to take into account. Bang, 2,000. But now that, I, now that I will be coming down, I'm pretty sure everything will overheat and I will be in a deep boo-boo. I am worried that on re-entry my, well, basically, fission, uh, fission uh, reactors will overheat and explode. But then again, I think it will be a risk that I will be having that I will have to take. I mean, the design looks solid and I trust the design, but there are still a few things to improve, clearly. Okay, one of our reactors has blown, then the other one, and we are flying reactorless. Which is... Well, I guess it's one way to fly, it's just not the smartest one. So I am testing now the air brakes, which seem to be doing their job admirably. While we are already on descent path, we, I might as well, you know, test the stability of the craft at descent, because it seems stable enough, even without the reactors in the front, I guess. Yes, okay, so definitely going over 2000 and then I wanted to activate the main engine, see if I can force it to shoot us out of the orbit. 
But then again, like I said, I'm not sure. However, our overheating does tend to get a little bit tedious and I'm trying to control my craft back into submission, but it clearly doesn't want to do that. For some reason. Yeah, basically I have decided that to scrap it and try once again. This time I actually know what I need to do and how to do it, so... Once again, setting power level of the both engines to the max. Activating then the radiators and after what I will be activating the fission reactors. Oh, and my, I might pull a landing gear because after all we are going Mach 1. <laughs> it's funny the things that you forget, you know. I now am flying with a little bit less speed simply to av avoid, you know, overheating too early in the atmosphere. I want to get a little bit higher and this time I'm actually using the profile, ascent profile of an SSTO. So basically pitching down to 10 to 20 degrees and trying to accelerate here in this region as fast as possible. I believe after what we will be kicking in the reactors, but once again I think it's time that we first kicked our jet engine to a full thrust soon enough. Yeah, giving it a little bit more juice. Passing 800 meters per second, roughly Mach 2 and then some. three point forty two mark if my mark number is correct and then once again I'm trying to make sure I can use the jet engine to shoot me out once again but this doesn't seem to be happening for some reason okay once again thrusting see if we can if that thick fixes the thing because my engine is thrusting now through my center of mass so I shouldn't have pitch roll or yaw. The aircraft should be stable and as far as I can see we are more or less stable going at roughly 4.32 Mach which is 1400 meters per second. Okay, my fission reactors are once again he getting heated up, so I am slightly concerned, but I'm now at 1620, so I think it would be a good time for me to start activating those engines. I'm once again consulting, or Valentina and Bill are once again consulting their manuals to make sure that they didn't miss anything. And the problem is, I believe here, is that despite the high speed, the apoapsis height is simply too low to do anything about it. So while I am th trying to thrust with both engine and plasma engines, I'm not sure if that will yield the desired result. Bam, bam. And once again, we have a glider, ladies and gentlemen. <sighs> okay, guys. Back to the drawing board, I guess. But first, let's see how stable it really is on re-entry. It does seem to lose control on re-entry as well, so that's uh, something that we need to be able to try a little bit more. 
Okay, so setting the power level at 100 by default for the plasma engines, because that's where we will be going anyway. Then I want to be making sure that uh, that um, I'm trying to put, thinking of putting some additional engines just to help a little bit with that transitional region when we need the extra kick to get um, to get push the apoapsis a little bit higher. And initially I was thinking carborundrum drives, but then again, I mean we still don't have carborundrum as a fuel. And I was thinking about inductive pulse emitter or anything like that, but in the end I s I've decided to stick with these engines. Okay. Maybe I could use some of these smaller engines actually to push me out. Do we have some radially attached? Oh, we have radially attached monoprop fuel engines. Well, that's exactly what the doctor ordered, because if you remember, I have some monoprop, which I will need for docking and stuff, but then again, I could use them to actually have a little bit extra kick when I will ne be needing it the most. I mean, clearly we should not rely on monopropellant as source of, uh, well, fuel for the thrust, but then again, for this kind of test, I think it might be beneficial. And we have... Werner von Kerman checking out once again the final design if he's pretty happy with it and I'm thinking also apart from just food I want to cram in here a little bit more RCS fuel because it does pull our center of mass forward when compared to center of lift and we do want to have it that way okay Now, let's see what else do we have. A lot of new parts that, parts that I don't know, but still. Okay, RCS thrusters, we will be needing it because I do plan to dock with the stations, you know. So, yeah. Okay, one on the top, other on the bottom, because I need my craft more or less to be well balanced. Seems like it for the time being. Great. Okay, once again, uh, removing this section and making sure that I add monoprop engines as well to my action groups, otherwise turning them on one by one really, really, really wouldn't make sense. Okay, once again, simulation, and I'm hoping that this time it should work correctly. Otherwise I'll just freak out. <laughs> But okay, let us fast forward the time until dawn, if possible. I just first to make sure that I update my craft information and making sure that I toggle the brakes because I don't want the craft to be leaving the curbin just yet and kicking the engines and getting ready for ascent. Valentina, Bill, and a ghost of Idlu making history. 200 meters per second. Okay, Mach 1. going as fast as possible and like I said I'm shooting for a 30-ish degree angle then a, a little bit higher as we go further along and I am using a lot of thrust from the engines just to shoot me out basically Forty-five in terms of apoapsis, it's not really that stellar, but then again we will have to make it work. Fifty-four, fifty-five, come on. Fifty-eight kilometers as uh, apoapsis. Fifty-four. 
and once again we are kicking our plasma engines in full force and this time uh, we have also kicked in the monoprop engines but they are a little bit producing torque so I have to use them sparingly as you can see once I turn them on they pull the aircraft's nose down so I cannot burn with a full thrust otherwise my plane will start to do flippity flip flip which is not something that I want however these plasma engines seem more than viable when we gave them initial kick with the monoprop engines to be able to actually finish up the circularization or at least it seems that way I have disabled the monoprop drives because uh, they ran out of fuel okay making sure that we point towards horizon we don't have a maneuver node but we don't need a maneuver node as I'm just watching my apoapsis and periapsis height increase the moment that these two are over 80 I'm pulling the plug in terms of you know <laughs> administrations and just pushing for this nice and clean solution to be able to fly okay going down life is a roller coaster just wanna ride it I'm very sorry for my terrible singing and I'm guessing that this is way off the original however I was in the good mood okay seems that we are orbital and we need 28.3 delta V to just circularize correctly I am accelerating to that point and pressing full drive so great that means that you will be recovering okay mandatory screenshot this one by the way uh, I'm gonna be calling Horus and Horus like the god of sun because in my previous save I was using Norse mythology names for my SSTOs like Yellerhorn, Valkyrie, uh, Odin and others Thor so in this w version of the series 2 I plan to use Egyptian mythology names so this one would be Horus some chatter here and there going and by the way guys that's it for the test like if you like and I'll see you in the next episode so final checks before I will say goodbye to you because we are coming up on the end of the episode and that is I planned to just slightly better align the circle of center of mass with my thrusters like this as you can see now when these are thrusting we see a rotate moment and I want to kill off that moment so let me just place the thrusters by the way if you were wondering which uh, mod is I'm, I'm using this is the RCS build aid which is helping me balance out these thrusters firing when I need them the most yeah so that's it guys once again thank you very much for watching this is Groundworks signing off and see you in the next episode